What is up guys, it's your boy Rick, Dismantle Minds, yes, Kakis here. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel and let me know what you think my next intro name should be. That comment section is absolutely wild. All right, today we've got some brand Spankin' new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, unveiling official information. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, yesterday, Bungie dev Joe Blackburn took to Twitter and revealed a bunch about the future of PvP, laying a roadmap for new maps finally, and new modes coming over the next year. If you haven't seen my video talking about all that information, definitely check it out. It is linked up above. Very important update for any PvP players. However, moving on from there, we have some new stuff revealed just today. So firstly, Bungie is separating melee actions. So right now, if you press your melee button, if you have a charged melee, it's going to try to do that. If you don't, it's going to do your normal melee. However, this does cause some problems. For example, if you're a hunter and have a throwing knife and you want to throw your throwing knife at a thrall but you're a little bit too close range, it'll lunge towards that thrall and you'll normal melee it. And obviously, this is not what you wanted to do. So, starting in season 15, there's going to be auto melee, which is what it is right now. The game's going to try to decide what's best for you. Then there's charged melee and uncharged melee. So you're going to be able to assign to a different, you know, button on your keyboard or controller what you want charged melee and uncharged melee to be if you want. So that means you can always throw a throwing knife, for example, if it's charged, even if the enemy is right in front of your face. And that's going to open up some pretty interesting plays that weren't available before. So definitely consider doing that next season. Moving on from there... We have a huge amount of information about the upcoming Season 15 Sandbox update. Firstly, we have some changes to Stasis Freeze. So, because getting frozen is the most annoying thing in the world, here is what Bungie is doing. Frozen players can now initiate Breakout while airborne. Also, they shorten the breakout animation and camera transition. This means that once you decide to break out, you'll be able to fight back sooner. And differentiated long freeze and short freeze visual treatment to make each status easier to identify. Now this comes on the heels of a huge stasis nerf that we got earlier in the season that made it so that the only time you're truly frozen long enough to require breaking out is via supers. So now you will be able to break out of those a little bit easier. Moving on from there, a big change to sliding. So Bungie says that sliding into every engagement is inherently low risk and too easy for the reward. Sorry to offend you shotgun apes, but here's what they're doing. Now, when you slide, the following weapon penalties occur. You're gonna get minus 20 stability, you're gonna get plus 15% shotgun pellet spread, and 1.5 times flinch. So, now, sliding, for example, around a corner is often still gonna be the best play because you get the jump on an opponent, you're a smaller target to hit, but just running at someone and then sliding to finish the engagement now is going to have some downside. So we're probably gonna see the meta and people's behavior change a little bit because of this. Moving on from there to the Titan. Firstly, with Rally Barricade. So basically Bungie says, hey, nobody's using the Rally Barricade. So here's what they're doing to buff it. Standing behind a Rally Barricade will now also provide the following weapon buffs. You're gonna get plus 30 stability, you're gonna get plus 10% range, and you're gonna get minus 50% flinch. So maybe we'll see more people set up with Rally Barricades in the future. Moving on from there, they say for all barricades. And they talk about how fast moving abilities will allow you to speed through an enemy barricade while taking minimal damage. But they say they don't really like how people are doing that. So players moving at a high velocity now take more damage 
when moving through hostile Titan barricades. Barricades now slightly protrude into the ground to better protect the Titan's feet on uneven ground. So this should reduce the instances where explosions and projectiles were able to sneak through the bottom of the barricade and hit the Titan. And that kind of makes sense. Like you put down your barricade, you don't expect a tiny little hole to be open on some weird terrain. So definitely some improvements to barricades. Moving on, the Behemoth Titan specifically. So, Bungie admits they actually over-nerfed the Behemoth Titan in the mid-season stasis nerfs. So firstly with Cryoclasm, they talk about how they kind of ruined it in PvE, not being able to throw down a grenade, cause a bunch of stasis crystals and slide right into it. Now you have to do that animation and sometimes loop around and it just feels terrible. So now, while it's equipped, your base slide now shatters crystals and frozen enemies. So you can throw the grenade, cause a crystal, and slide right into it immediately and shatter that once again. A huge improvement for PvE. But they also increase the duration of the effect on your screen, notifying you that Cryoclasm Long Slide is ready from 1 second to 4.5 seconds. So if you still want to slide for days, you know, you still have to run a bit before you activate it, but now if you just want to break or shatter a crystal, you can just slide right into it with your normal slide. Also with Shiver Strike, they increase the movement speed by 25%, uh, so now it can actually be used used as an ability to get out of trouble, uh, potentially make a jump, etc. But for Whisper of Rhyme, this has become a huge part of the meta. They fixed a bug where the overshield provided by Whisper of Rhyme was not scaling precision damage correctly. And they say this is why this was so powerful. It was way beefier than it was intended to be. Moving on from there, Middle Tree Sunbreaker. So firstly, with the throwing hammer, they increase the time before the hammer explodes after hitting the ground from 6.5 seconds to 10 seconds, so way more time to pick it up, and they increase damage versus powerful PvE combats by around 50%. That is a huge buff. Moving on to top and bottom tree striker. So, Fists of Havoc, they increase the slam detonation radius by 14%, then they reduce the slam damage fall off and reduce the slam attack activation cost from 21% to 18%. So, slams are just actually quite a bit bigger. They do more damage because less fall off and now you can do more slams in a single super because it takes up less super energy. Moving on to the middle tree striker. So for inertia override, they increase the duration from four seconds to six seconds and sliding over an ammo brick now grants 20% melee energy. They also say this change will be balanced out by something we haven't mentioned yet and we'll say more in a future TWAB. Interesting. Now for top tree sentinel for ward of dawn specifically they increase the damage taken from bosses from 0.25 times to seven times at zero resilience what but they say damage taken can scale down to 0.25 times based on the owner's resilience stat. So they specifically say the following change refers to the Ward of Dawn bubble itself and not the players inside the bubble. So they want bosses to actually be able to pop your bubble more often. They don't want the solution to every boss fight being a bubble. However, if you have like a max resilience stat, you can apparently get the bubble to where it is right now. You just have to consciously choose to invest in that stat if you want that. Moving on from there, we have the Hunter class. And starting things out with the Revenant, we actually have, again, a couple of buffs due to an admitted overnerf. So firstly, for Silence and Squall, they increase the movement speed by 20%, and now it's going to stop when it touches a boss. So it won't just slightly slow a boss and keep moving, it will continue to damage and slow and potentially freeze that boss, which is great for PvE. Then for Withering Blade, they increase projectile speed and tracking by 10%. Moving on to the Middle Tree Gun. Gunslinger. So they say we'd like to give hunters a larger window to defeat burning enemies and trigger playing with fire. As such, we're giving Knife Trink a 25% buff. So they're going to increase the burning duration from 3 seconds to 4 seconds with Knife Trick. 
Moving on from there, the top tree gunslinger. So for six shooter, the damage fall off now, now starts at 25 meters instead of 20 meters. So a little bit uh, more rangy and more consistent there. Moving on to Arc Strider, so a bunch of changes here. So for Arc Staff, they extended the passive super duration from 16 seconds to 20 seconds. They increased the heavy slam detonation radius from 5 meters to 6 meters, and they increased damage versus PvE combatants by 33%. All PvE combatants from red bars to bosses. Now for Top Tree Arc Strider Deadly Reach, they increased the duration from 8 seconds to 10 seconds. And for Middle Tree Arc Strider, for Lightning Weave, dealing damage with Tempest Strike now triggers Lightning Weave. The timer can be extended by dealing damage with any weapon. Wow, those are some massive changes. Certainly to Arc Staff, that substantial damage buff for PvE. Could it be time for players to put back on that chess piece that extends the duration of your arc staff? Will this become another high DPS super? It's very possible. Moving on from there to the middle tree Night Stalker for Spectral Blades. They reduced the damage reduction during super from 52% to 47%. So it's going to be easier to kill someone in Spectral Blades, especially in PvP. Also, they reduced additional damage reduction while invisible from about 5% to about 3%. Uh, moving on from there, the Warlock. So firstly with Shadebinder. Specifically with Winter's Wrath, they reduced the Shatter Pulse damage versus close range supers and a Warlock must now freeze and shatter twice to defeat players in Burning Maul, Fists of Havoc, a Sentinel Shield, Nova Warp, Arc Staff, or Spectral Blades. And they say Glacial Quake still only requires one Shatter to defeat. Essentially, Bungie says, look, if you have a Shadebinder Warlock and you're dueling another super, you're almost always going to win that because you have auto-tracking projectiles. If they hit, they freeze, and then you just do the Shatter and you've just killed another super. But now you're going to have to do that twice, so you're actually going to have to try to kill another super. Moving on to the top tree Dawnblade. Bungie says top tree Dawnblade is straight up dominant in PvP, so we're taking some measures to make it slightly less so. So for Celestial Fire, they reduce the tracking cone angle, the arming shape, the proximity detonation now shrinks over time, they reduce the detonation size by one meter, and damage fall off increased at short distances. For Icarus Dash, now provides one air dodge every four seconds, while under the effects of heat rises, increased to two dodges every five seconds. Now for heat rises, they increase the duration from 10 seconds to 15 seconds, and they increase the time extension awarded for air kills while heat rises is active. The extension duration differs based on the type of enemy killed. Your location now appears on the enemy radar when using heat rises. Now for middle tree dawn blade. So for Well of Radiance, they increase the damage taken from bosses from 0.25 times to 1.5 times at zero resilience. So damage taken can scale down to 0.25 times based on the owner's resilience stat. And note, this refers to the Well of Radiance itself and not the players inside the well. So again, using a Well of Radiance on every single boss fight, the boss can now break that well by shooting it. And now, actually, the resilience stat is finally actually useful in PvE for if you are either a Bubble Titan or a Well Warlock actually having those supers survive the damage phase. However, Bungie continues, they increase the damage resistance buff versus enemy players from 20% to 40%. Players inside Well of Radiance are now immune to stasis freeze and slow, and the Well Sword can now be frozen and shattered by stasis. So essentially, you're going after the Well itself instead of the players inside if you're a stasis user. Also for Guiding Flame, they increase the duration from 7 seconds to 10 seconds, and they increase the damage buff from 20 to 25%. So wow, 
big changes to the PvE meta because of this, and presumably you're gonna see more PvP Well of Radiances because of those uh, big damage resistance improvements. Moving on to the bottom tree Dawn Blade. So for Phoenix Dive, they reduce the delay before the dive starts, and you can now input a direction to dive in that direction. So that is a huge increase to the versatility of that movement ability. For igniting touch, so ability rework, solar ability kills and kills on burning targets now cause targets to explode and burn other nearby targets who will also explode if they die while burning. Wow, that's really interesting. You're basically turning all enemies into sunshot victims. I wonder, you know, how good that's gonna be, especially that sounds like a good PvE perk. But we've gotta move on to Middle Tree Stormcaller. So for Chaos Reach, increased beam environmental collision size to better match collision size with damage size, and they reduce the beam damage radius in PvP by 20%, and they reduce the beam endpoint sphere radius in PvP by 33%. So essentially, you've got to be more accurate with your chaos reach. You can't hit someone around a corner, which I definitely have. You can't, you know, barely strafe by someone and still hit them. You're actually going to have to hit them with that beam. But there is actually more for Bottom Tree Stormcaller. So firstly, for Arc Soul, they increase the duration from 12 seconds to 13 seconds, and they increase the fire rate by 10%. For Electrostatic Surge, now increases sprint speed when allies are near. And for Landfall, now fires five Arc Ground projectiles on cast. Wow, really interesting. Then for Middle Tree Voidwalker. So for Nova Warp, increased damage versus PvE combats by 73%. No longer slows movement speed while charging or charged, and it now detonates on cast. So for Handheld Supernova, increased damage versus PvE combats by 100%. Increase hold time from 2.5 seconds to 3.2 seconds. Wow, that's actually pretty insane. Could we see Nova Warp and especially handheld supernovas being utilized in a PvE environment? Certainly, that supernova damage is insane combined with the controversial hold exotic gauntlets to increase that even further and provide some survivability. That is really, really something to consider next season. And the last important thing Bungie talks about is that they're improving the powering up stasis experience. So if you buy Beyond Light, uh, or if you did, you may remember you have to go to Europa and it's quite a while before you unlock your stasis subclass and then you have to go on some pretty lengthy quests in order to get the different aspects and fragments. So they say starting in season 15, our darkness guide on Europa, the Exo Stranger, will now reveal more information on how to complete the tasks required for earning more stasis power. Guardians who have finished the Beyond Light campaign and visit the Exo Stranger on Europa will see an entire path for unlocking aspects and fragments. Additionally, many of the pre-requirements for obtaining and completing the Born of Darkness quest chain will be re uh, reduced or removed. Previously, Guardians needed to complete several quest chains to unlock the Salvation's Grip before Stasis uh, would grant them additional power, so that's changed. So it's just going to be easier, especially for anyone buying Beyond Light, to actually go get a few aspects and power that subclass up. It, it, right now, it is kind of a slog. And guys... That is it for all of the important information today. Holy crap, this was a big one with some massive, massive changes to the meta coming up within uh, Season 15. I am especially excited as a PvE player for all of those big PvE damage increases. You know, 33% from Arc Strider, 100% from Handheld Supernova. These could really start to be players within the PvE meta. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.